How's it going, motherfuckers? My name's Bert. And I'm fucking fine. And this is... Bert and F***. We all speak languages. Some of us, more than one language. In fact, Alfonso, I believe you speak many languages. I suck at several languages, yes. Well, So, jack of all trades, master of none, right? Exactly. I, just, <laughs> I, I talk shitty versions of a ton of languages. Not, not a ton, some. Now, there is one in particular that is universal around the world, and that is profanity. Profanity, in itself, is its own language, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't agree. I just I think it's a, a a universal variation of language. I would say. Well, yeah, but every every culture everywhere has its own profanity. I actually think so. This is interesting that you're saying that because this is what I want to contest in this very episode is the fact that profanity to me is integral to language, and so those that try to extract it from language are fucking wrong. Oh, all right, getting right into the media episode. I mean, oh, that's yeah. the whole reason we're here. Yeah. Now, profanity. Is something you're actually very affluent in. I would say I'm known for it in certain circles. Yeah. More so in the in the States than in Spain. So in Spain, where I'm from, we swear a lot. Um, not in every Spanish-speaking country is that the case. It's right. more about a Spanish thing. I'll get into that in a second. But here, I've also been, you know, there's like some circles among our common circles. Oh, yeah, for sure. Know me as straight up the motherfucker. So I have wait 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 wait. That's a nickname of yours. That was a nickname, not so much anymore, but it used to be. Yeah, because I would say that word all the time, and we will get into that in a second here. But there was a back in a long time ago. In fact, in two thousand eight, okay. I was like not exactly fresh off the boat, but I'd been here a few years. I was still getting the hang socially and stuff. And I was uh, I was invited to a party in a weekend. Uh, I was working in this um, corporation that you and I have both worked at different times of our career. I'm not going to mention names, but it's a, a big retail corporation. Ah, uh, yes, yes. It has a, a big um, presence in our in, in, in our field. And I was invited to this uh, weekend party, and I remember thinking, um, I have to go. And as you know now, I'm not very much of a party person. I'm, I'm very social. Yeah. Uh, I like my friends. I like I like knowing people, but I don't like to go out to parties all that much. Yeah. And uh, I used to when I was young. I don't at all now. Uh, but I, I kind of made an effort because it was kind of a work thing, too. I wanted to network. I wanted to be liked. I wanted oh, to absolutely. Meet Networking people. is huge here. Right. Plus, plus, it was kind of a nice thing. The person that invited me, I liked. Um, the, the couple that invited me. Okay, okay. People I liked. But at the same time, I was kind of telling myself, I have to be on my best behavior. You know, I, I really want to be... On so it wasn't something I was looking forward to because I was going to be dressed well and well behaved on my best behavior and as you know, not everybody likes that. Not everybody relaxes oh, doing I, that. I can relate to that. Yeah. yeah, and I think many many people that are listening to us can relate. You know, and especially when business is mixed up, you know, you have to kind of play a role a little bit, role play act a role. So anyway, so here I am, and I, I wear a nice iron shirt, and I kind of like took care of myself to be good. You know. <laughs> fairly acceptably looking that day and uh, I'm going to drive there and I'm telling myself because I know myself to be an antisocial <laughs> personality I'm like you know just deal you know it's it's going to be fine deal you ever like a your... pep talk in the car to yourself almost it, yes thank yeah. You. yeah exactly <laughs> so I'm like yeah I'm like be on your best behavior it won't be that bad you know just be nice to people it's okay to feel uncomfortable that's right. what you do when you're being social and, and just you know mind your words mind you know be careful that not everybody's going to think the way you do, so be respectful. That usual respectful stuff, you know. Uh, so here I am, and, I, and I'm going there kind of dreading it deep inside, like hoping I was somewhere else doing something else. Uh, and I get there, and there's like a ton of cars in front of the house where it's uh, South Minneapolis, there's a ton of cars oh, yeah. in front of the house. And it's a nice day, so there's a ton of people outside, and there's a door open, and there's a, a bunch of ladies out there having a cigarette smoke. And there I am, like going just, and, and there's a gap right in front of the door, so I park right in front of the door. So of course everyone stops the conversation and looks at the new arrival. Yep. And I open the door, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, just keep it cool, just cool it, be nice, be charming. <laughs> you can do this. And they all look at me like, who's this guy? You know, and I can I can feel I'm being evaluated. Yeah. So I start crossing the street, and from within the house, the voice of the host booms. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the arrival of the one and only, the motherfucker. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm mid 
that is that is quite the entrance. I'm actually in the middle. Of, I'm crossing the street. Like I'm not even. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And this voice is boomed out. Now everyone's looking at me, and I have to, you know, I mean, hey, uh, yeah, it's nice to be here. Time huh? to turn the charm on. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah. So <laughs> that's right. That's me, the motherfucker. So I, I was like, now how do I play with this one? Because I knew, I knew that in that environment, not everybody was profanity friendly. Yeah. And so let's talk about that a little bit. So in Spain, we are profanity friendly. What do I mean by that? Um, to us, profanity is an integral part of the language. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's something that if you know how to speak well, if you're well learned, you also know how to use it properly. Right. We have an, a royal academy of the language who writes the official Spanish dictionary every year. And they're like parliamentaries. They have seats. They have, you have wow, a seat in, really? the, in the royal academy. And every seat is a, a letter. Okay. So the most honored one is, of course, the Enye, because that's the most Spanish of letters. Great. All right. So whoever sits <laughs> in the Enye is, you know, it's got has special props. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and anyway, and, and, and a couple of these guys are laureate um, authors. Uh, and one of them in particular in the 70s was uh, a big purporter of profanity. And case in point, we don't bleep profanity on TV. Well, that's the case in most European countries, isn't it? You make up a great point because I was actually going to say that if you go to South America, the Spanish-speaking country in South America, they will behave like in North America. They will or get censored. It's considered rude. Let's let, let's right. go there first. Let's go to the cultural difference. It's there's no judgment there from my part. It's just like right. Let's that's just. The way that it is. Correct. That what's the custom. So he, here it's considered rude. If you if you think about what Bert just said, like if you actually watch a European movie of the English persuasion, so a British movie, for example, you'll hear yeah. a lot of like mom is serving dinner and she'll tell her own daughter, are you fucking stupid? And, <laughs> you know, and everybody, no one is shocked, you know, people swear. So yeah, it's just, it's part of the thing. Like. I've noticed the big difference with swearing in other countries because, um, like, you know, growing up here, swearing when you're, like, very young, you're always taught, like, oh, those are the words you just can't say. Like, as soon as you can even perceive language mm -hmm. and you, like, start parroting back things to your parents that you're just hearing, and your parents are like, ah, oh, shit, they're picking up on language. Don't ever say those words. Don't, don't ever say that. And this is kind of where we meet. So that's true also in Europe. Uh, but this is where it, but this is where it's a different approach. So in Europe, it'll be more about like these are bad words. Yeah, you are too young. Check this out. So, but before I'll say that, I'll say my daughter knew every single Spanish <laughs> swear word from the age of six, and by choice, you know, other than the first year or so where she tries to say them to see how she shocks. Me. Right, but right, right. This the, is the typical kids being kids, sort of thing. Yeah, because yeah, they're, yeah. they're just testing out the the, the, field, the waters, right? Yeah. Um, so aside from that, she did not utter a single swear word until she was 15, by choice. Wow. And this is why. This is what I'm going to explain. I feel that in Europe we have the, a better approach. I feel. it's I'm subjective, obviously. But I feel that what we do is we teach ch children there are bad words, just like you do in, in, in the Americas. There are bad words. But adults know how to use them. You're too young to know how to use it. So if, if you don't learn how to use them, they're going to be used against you. Right. You're going to say them in a bad setting. You're going to offend somebody or someone is going to use it to hurt you. Or, you know, you need to wait till you have a feel of a language and two social custom among adults to understand how to swear. So I, uh, I apologize for having sworn in front of you. That was not very respectful and you shouldn't do it. That's what we do. Yeah. And then sometimes it's get over yourself. Like, this person's an adult. When you grow up, there's a saying in Spain, like, when you grow a beard, you'll be able to swear. That's what they say. <laughs> so boys, obviously to women, they don't tell them when you grow a beard. Um, right. And, uh, you know, in Spain was traditionally more male chauvinist. I, I like to think that it's not so, for it hasn't been that male chauvinist for a long time. But, but um, I'm not the one to speak about this. But that's what I wanted to talk about with, in terms of, the cultural differences there. Right, because here uh, in the U.S. anyway, it, you know, those are the words that parents, like I said before, are going to say, don't ever say those words. And like you hear it and it comes up in other conversation or anything, people will try to deliberately like censor themselves around children specifically. Like as long as they're not hearing it, they're not going to repeat it sort of situation. And truth is, kids, as soon as they hear don't do that, especially here, at least speaking from my experience. The moment I heard, don't do that, I immediately was like, I got to learn all the words and use them. I got to know what they are. Right. I got to know 
all of whom. There's nothing more intriguing <laughs> than a locked door. Right. And then it was one of those things where, you know, us being kids and everything, we were growing up, n- knowing that we're not supposed to use the words, it's always how many times can you get into it in like close proximity to an adult <laughs> and like get away with it? Or like, right. you know, try and mutter under your breath as you're like walking away. Your parents just like started scolding at you and you're walking away. You're like, bitch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that I have to say, that's universal. I think that we yeah, can answer yeah. But um, saying, uh, you know, talking about um, hiding it, um, I, for example, I have a, an Instagram profile right now. As, as you know, like I use a lot of humor with profanity because I enjoy it in the States. Particularly. Well, I mean, if people appreciate profanity, there's a lot of humor that just naturally comes from using profanity. Right. Not only that, but I mean, it does piss off the right people, in my opinion. And it, it amuses, you know, it usually generally amuses people that... I, I find have more interesting takes on life, you know? Yeah. So on my Instagram, I don't know if you recall this. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but I have where well, you're supposed to have your descriptor. or Like your or account you, info or whatever. Yeah. yeah some yeah. people put a link and stuff. I have these Chinese characters that literally mean fuck you, okay? And so before, if you hovered <laughs> over it, you know. Um, it, it would translate. Said, yeah, yeah. When you put something that's not English on an English phone or an, an English website. Yeah. Um, there would be an offer to translate on hover. And it used to, you would click on it and say, fuck you, which I thought was really funny because uh, I have these Chinese characters and people go like, what's he saying? Fuck you. You know, it was, it was just this stupid, stupid shit, you know? And, uh, and now it says, damn you. So they're actually changing. So it's the same characters, same Chinese characters. They're just changing the word as it gets shown to other people. The, the operating system is censoring it. Ooh. Well, Notice, notice how when you type something on your phone. I have an iPhone. I don't know if it. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to type the word in "fuck" to an iPhone and it corrects it to "duck." duck. I ducking hate that. Yeah, you see, you yeah. see how that takes away from that yeah. a lot. <laughs> well, it's just like people that, that spell f asterisk ck. Oh yeah. What the fuck do you think somebody's thinking when they read that? They're just thinking, or are they thinking "fuck"? It's just spelling the same exact word, you know. Well, because you're still planting the word in someone's mind. Yeah. No matter how, but it's. Uh, I actually saw a comedian do this. Uh, talk about this. I know. With other about. words, who are, you know, they're talking about oh the f word. You can't say the f word or the c word. You can't say the c word. Yeah. And all he's doing is planting it into other people's heads. So then another comedian comes up and riffs yeah. on it and goes. You know, you're just saying the word by saying the C word or the F word. Right, right, right. right. You're just putting it somewhere else. We're talking fact, about, I think it was Louis C.K., right? I, I thought you were uh, I thought you were on purpose not mentioning him. Yeah, it was Louis C.K. Yeah, it was and Louis C.K. It was C. about K. the N-word. And well, he did the N-word he, thing. He literally says, you know, the one word I hate most is the N-word. And then when everybody laughs and, and claps, says, and I don't mean nigger, I mean the N-word. Yeah. Because when somebody says the N-word, when you go into TV and see... What he says, a, nice, a white woman with big, nice hair saying the N-word, she's right. just putting nigger in your head. Yep. So, so take responsibilities for the icky words that you want to use. I think that's exactly what he said. That's pretty That's pretty much spot on. And and it's true. Like if you read F blank CK. Or what, even F space space K or something like that. Right. Or F, F dash. I've seen, you know, F dash or, you know, or Fing. What do you think people read in their heads? And number that's the first question. The second question is, do you think you're going to eradicate profanity by acting like it doesn't exist? That's the biggest question there. And then the third question is like, why do you want to eradicate profanity? There's two ways that I see that profanity is understood by humans. One is the whole like use your cuss word sparingly, son. That way, oh, when you John drop Wayne one, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. That way, when you drop one, people know you mean business. You know, <laughs> it's impactful, right? And the other one is don't give it that much power. It's just a fucking word. It's just a word. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of how my parents over time started with don't use it, and then after a while they just kind of gave up, and they were like. I mean, it's just a word. Be respectful and don't use it at the wrong point. But it's just a word. Like That's, their their attitude changed over time. But it's because I just personally didn't care and kept using the words. And they're like, "All right, well, we can't stop him. So let's just at least teach him when it's appropriate." Well, and because as many, so, I think it became more of that Spanish mentality that you were talking about. Absolutely. What I was going to say is that your parents proved out that as many adults, I include myself here, you learn with your children too. <laughs> Hey, so they had one approach which was more simplistic and I dare say more immature when you were born that they had copied from everybody else, which is what you do when you're not 
mature enough and you have made your own opinions. And then as they grew as adults and they flourished as human beings, they went like, well, first of all, our, our kid is not a criminal, nor is he an ignorant for speaking like this. He's just being a kid, being a kid. Yeah. And we're clearly not getting the message across. This is how we're going to get the real message across. And then they got the real message across to you. Right. Which is do whatever you want, but know this and know this and know that you're doing this when you do that. Exactly. And make your own choices. And I think pretty much the only time I wasn't cursing as a child uh, was probably in school because there's a lot of censorship and making things sure that other kids aren't hearing things because they're trying to mitigate their own selves. Like, Mm -hmm. All right, let's not make sure the school is responsible. Kids are going to be kids. They're going to find it out on their own. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to advocate for any of that at school. So that way we have ourselves covered so parents don't come in and get all angry with us. So I didn't do it at school. And then anytime I saw my grandmother, like grandparents, never, Mm -hmm. not once. It depends on the kind of grandparents, but yeah. My parents, my grandparents could even curse. And if I even thought about it, my parents would look at me and go, you know, they just give me like that side eye, like don't even, don't Mm -hmm. let, grandma's going to do it. She's old. She's earned the right. Okay, but see, but see, but see, if grandma's gonna do it, you're on the same exact, we end up in the same place. Yeah, and it's like when my daughter, who had been a charming, charming little girl, and and she knew who I was. I mean, I have I had not been playing. You have not changed much. A part in front of me, but I haven't hidden who I really am from my daughter. Right, right. Um, um, you know, and I'm actually proud to say that. You know, because um, my my parents didn't do that. Um, they learned my mother learned later. But my my daughter was this charming girl that had decided she wasn't going to swear. She she understood swear words. She could hear them. She was she wouldn't be shocked. But she decided that, that was not aesthetic for her. That she didn't find that in good taste, and she decided not to do it. And then one good day, I was driving in the car. She was telling me about her friend. She was fifteen, and she said, "Well, I just dad, I just really don't like that shit." And I just. And I, <laughs> And I looked at her, and she just points at my face. She goes, "Don't you dare say a thing to me!" You know? <laughs> you know? Wow! Don't you say a thing to me? I just kept driving. She put you in your place. Well, I, I mean, she was right. Like, how how could I of say course, this? Of I, course. I mean, I was right to be shocked because I. That's never also a really intelligent her. girl to be like. Oh, you've got no leg to stand on here. I don't care what parentage thing you're going to try and pull out. Don't even. Well, if, if you know you're the offspring of the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, I'm, she didn't know that at the time. Pretty, but, oh, yeah, she did. Well, yes, yeah, she did. Okay, well. Yeah. Well, because people, no, because people would make jokes about like, you know, hey, motherfucker. You know, because oh, yeah. I would say it all the time. Hey, motherfucker. I even came up with a spelling for it. Motherfucker is for Spanish spelling for it, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I dare say it kind of took off on, on online right around the time I started using it in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, but they spell, in Spain, in general, they spell it with a K, which K is not really Spanish originally. It's a Q. Oh, really? But, okay. Yeah, I, I put the, the spelling on the screen for those that are actually watching this video <laughs> to see that. So what is the spelling? Um, M A D E F A Q U E R. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. M A D E R F A Q U E R. Okay. So, matter. <laughs> Let me try it in. Motherfucker. Mike Oscar. No, wait. Mike Alpha. Why, Delta. why are you speaking in code? Echo. Because I, I just learned it. I'm so proud. Like, I can do it. <laughs> Echo Foxtrot Alpha Delta. Mother. Echo Romeo, Foxtrot Alpha, Q is Q is Quebec, Quebec uniform. Echo Romeo again. Ha! Ah. Now, for all the military people out there, we're sorry if we just like accidentally ordered a strike or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> abort! Alpha, Foxtrot Romeo, take <laughs> abort! Abort! <laughs> oh okay so one other thing i want to talk about with all of this is i mean we all know curse words nowadays right but curse words have evolved significantly over the years one great example that we've already used in this podcast is piss like somebody being pissed off or whatever mm-hmm. when i was growing up my parents always taught me that was a curse word you can't mm-hmm. say piss you have to say peeing or urinating or something you you can't say pissed and then like not even a decade later maybe a decade later 
suddenly that was not even a thing. Like people could just say they're pissed off all of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's just this weird evolution of how some words can be considered vulgar at different stages of history. And then as they go on, they sort of like lose that meaning and lose that vulgarness. And then Mm -hmm. it gets replaced by something else. Mm -hmm. Because we're always thinking of new ways to come up with like new profanity. New ways of, yeah. And, and, and there's some people that are always thinking of new ways to shame other people. That's true. It's a mix of both. So it's funny because now that you say that, in the 70s when I was growing up, uh, you wouldn't imagine how many parents were called Dick. My dad's name is actually Dickie or Dick. Right. And if you it, now people are more hesitant to call their children Dick, although it's not got to the point where it's only a swear word. Right. You can still be Dick Tracy. I mean, you, people can still be called Dick. You know, right. And it's fine. But now it's getting really close to becoming part of the glass. In fact... Well, I was going to say, here's the thing, is that that's still considered a swear word very much so, and to the fact where it's even now just starting to be a word that people cannot type into, like, form fields. So there's been many times where I've been online, and I'm trying to fill something out, and it's like, oh, I have to fill out my dad's name for this, because I'm applying for something, I need to put a reference down, put my dad's name. His name isn't accepted, because his name is Dick. Yep. Or it'll auto-correct it to Richard, and I go, no, 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 That's the whole his danger. name is Dick. That's the whole danger of letting certain people curate the content of other people right. and censoring things as big as an operating system or even the internet. It's just really stupid because, you know, who has, who, how can you have the authority of saying that certain letters in a certain order should not be spoken or written ever? Like who does that? Like wh- what's that going to help? How is that going to help humanity evolve or civilization progress? I mean, it's just dumb. Here's another example, a different retailer that I've worked for. I don't know if you've worked for that one. I think you have worked for that one, too. And we found out while I was working on the project for them that we had a problem with the deliveries, the fulfillment in um, the e-commerce um, okay. processing yeah, yeah. Of, the, of, the, you know, of the products and the, and the fulfillment of orders because there were some words that were being censored automatically that were actually locations where the packages needed to oh. go to. So there's a place called Milford, Kansas. And the MILF part was being dropped because some asswipe decided that that was a bad word that didn't need ever to be reproduced anywhere. And so now they're doing this. Who? How ignorant does a person have to be to take it upon themselves to think what language needs to be spoken? So was it just going to like Ord, Kansas? Yeah, it was Ord, Kansas. No, it was just staying there in the... In, in, in the, the yeah, distribution it, center or, or it was getting returned to sender by the post office. I don't remember what it was, but the orders was definitely not getting to Milford, Kansas or Milford, Missouri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I don't know where it was, Milford exactly. I think there's probably more than one. There's a couple. So the team, uh, a member of the team had to jump on that and create a list of synonyms of things that needed to be so now you start doing that, and now you create all this technical debt of you need to have two people going through a list of an algorithm that automatically is just killing and... stuff because some idiot has decided this word so it does not need to exist. I mean, who decides that? That's like throwing a, doc, uh, a monument, like burning a monument, or you know, it's like I have a problem with certain monuments that are that symbolize things that I don't like. Yeah, but I have a problem with taking them down because you know, just like I do with taking down like a, a statue of Julius Caesar. You know, I mean, it's just a representation of the people at that time. It's it's not only history, but it's people speaking their mind. It's being able to have this freedom. It's of an expression, pre- expressing themselves. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Uh, even though it's a megalomaniac one, it still is one. Correct. So, so those kind of things, um, talking about things that evolved too, um, I remember, do you, do you remember the series Deadwood? Yeah. That yes, was I do. so good. It's such a good series. That was so good. And they swear a lot in that series. And there was a fandom blog. Is that what you call them? Fandom? fandom? Yeah. A fandom wiki or a fandom blog. I don't know if it's a wiki or a sure. blog, but yeah. a fandom site. Uh, that was really good uh, because, you know, the, the series is very well historically documented um, in Deadwood, in the settlement of Deadwood. Um, and how from territory it became state, and it has a lot of historical figures. Yeah, yeah. As you know, like Wild Bill Hickok, Calamity Jane, um, Seth Bullock, I think is his name. There's a bunch, and Al Swearingen. I think Al Swearingen is also a real figure. Ooh, okay, and Al okay. Swearingen is a super charismatic character played by, I cannot believe I don't remember the actor's name because I love that actor, so sorry. Um, we will get back to you on it's that. It's on the screen right now. Yeah. For anyone right. listening, apologies that we don't remember we it. We can't read it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Al Swearingen swears all the time. All the time. And uh, I read in the blog that those swear words would not have been considered swear words in the Wild West. Because uh, it, 
Some of those words didn't even exist, right? <laughs> no, they did, but eh, it was like fucking was not, uh, fucking was kind of a vulgar word, but it wasn't a profane word. Right. You know, so it's kind of like, I don't know, like saying where it's at instead of where it is. You sure, know, sure. Where it's at is vulgar. Like if you're trying to speak correctly, you're not supposed to say where it's at, but no one cares because, you know, you can say it and it doesn't bang on people's ears. But what really was considered a swear word was, hell and bloody and things like that that were blasphemous back then that was something that could get you actually yep. um into in trial it, 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 it was it, it would be pro- prosecuted criminally too like blasphemy was really oh yeah yeah it, it was a, and this was true in spain too like but so you're telling story. me even like in the back in the old west they'd be like oh hell's bells like that was well if you said that because like, you were a badass and you had like, a couple of coals hanging from you. <laughs> <laughs> and the real law was way but if you said that in the east coast where there was like a you know a structure of law um, sure, sure, you, could, sure you could go to court a for, little more structured on that. that side yeah and especially if you said it in front of ladies things that have always mystified me was bloody as you know um, I went to British school right and bloody was a big deal like teachers would which I still don't get well, I didn't get it until I figured it out, you know, reading some of the books that I always talk about that I never remember which one's which. Uh, <laughs> the yeah. mythical books. The mythical books. <laughs> um, and I, I read in one of this book, and it's a reference to God's blood, and that's where it's blasphemous. So the expression used to be God's oh, blood. Oh, okay. And so you're talking about the whole San Creole of like the you know, Holy Grail. And right, all, right, right. You know, the the blood of Christ. That's what you're mentioning. It. So it's blasphemous because, as you know, I think, I don't remember what the commandment is, but you should not take the name of the Lord in vain and or, you know, so you, you can't do any mentions to God directly. That's blasphemous. Right. So if you just say, oh, God, that's already bad. If you say hell, it's bad because you're making a reference to you know something that opposes God. Mm-hmm. And if you do bloody, you're making a reference to God's blood or to the blood of Christ, which is huge. I mean, having grown up in a country that used to be majoritarily Catholic and for a time was also known by its Inquisition, <laughs> there's still a lot of legacy <laughs> of that thing. Like you can't say stuff like that. And that, if we get to it later, I'll tell you what the word swear cuss word in Spanish is because it's still a blasphemy yeah. as opposed to. Uh, a reference to having sex, you know, and so that's what Deadwood. So Deadwood, the only thing that they did in Deadwood, according to this fandom, that was not historically accurate, but they did it in order for the story to have the same type of impact. The same impact it would right. have back then, right? So if they have Al Surgeon going like hell and God's blood and this bloody hell better not be so and yeah. hell with you and God, you know, curse you, no one gets wrinkled about that. But yeah. The thing is, when Al Swarnjian spoke, he was swearing. And that also probably comes from swearing, taking an oath on God's name. That's where swearing comes from. You can't Like the actual term, swear. That, yes. Like it's Spanish, a swear. Right. In Spanish, it's juramento. It comes from jury, which, which is swearing, too. So if, if those cuss words, curse words, which would be more accurate because it used to be something that you cursed. Right, 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 right. Uh, are swear taking oaths in the name of the Lord in vain. So I swear to ah, God. I got it. I swear to God is really strong. And in Spain, it's actually stronger than in English. I heard that one a lot growing up, but nobody blinks an eye at that anymore. Exactly. So to your point, it's evolved, but it used to be that way. And now it's more of the F word. So in Deadwood, they have Al Strong just say fucking everything, cocksucker and f- right. fucking shit and fucking. Terms that are much more like people nowadays hear them and they're like, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And, and it's hilarious because they do it really well. They do this old English, like half old English from an 18th century type, 19th century. Yeah. Her cunt in laws will sell to third party cocksuckers inimical to the whole. Which is really funny. So, like, um, Calamity Jane, who is the character arch in that show, is just perfect. Have you seen it? Oh, yes, I yeah. absolutely seen it's it. It's like, amazing. It's like, be blessed or be well. And she's like, be fucked. Be brief. <laughs> be fucked. It's really funny. <laughs> and speaking of that, I read an article some time ago that I found extremely interesting. Wait, what is this? About the relativity of cussing. Okay. Do you actually know the article, or is it a mythical article? It's not a mythical article. Okay, so let me say this. for, for <laughs> In the same way that I say that I, I may not remember some stuff, if I tell you I've read something, I do remember that. So I I, I, have, I have not dreamt that. So that article I did read, and I think it's actually in a line, we, which we should be able to, fu- to find it. Okay. Um, but it was interesting because it said there's – so, okay, so – let me let, let me summarize it like this. So there's two words in the English language, both of which, two terms, both of which describe having sex, one of which is considered a bad word. 
And the other one is not considered a bad word. It can be repeated in normal conversation in any social setting. Sure. It's more civilized is what you're saying. Both of them? I don't think so. I think they're just two words, and both of them mean the exact same thing, and they are both part of the English dictionary. One of them you cannot say without being bleeped, and the other one you can. Okay. So guess which one? It's um, The term is having sex. Guess which Fuck. Okay, fuck, fuck, which, which would be fuck, which it would it be the one you can't say? Oh, yeah, that's absolutely the one you can't say. That's the one you can't say. That, you, you get censored no matter what. Right. So what about the other one? What's the other one? Uh, the other one I know specifically from watching the show The Big Bang Theory. Okay. Because they use that in a lot. And, like, these are, like, really big nerds that are, like, they've grown up very, like, proper and modest okay. and, like, oh, I can't say bad words. And so it's coitus. It is coitus. Do you know why one is frowned upon where the other one's not? Because fuck is considered vulgar. Why? I'm assuming just because of how harsh it sounds and the other different ways that you can say it. Like, it, it doesn't just mean having sex nowadays. Like, it can mean a plethora of other things. Um, and so that's what well, I'm assuming it's that versus coitus, which just sounds more like... It's only ever meant for one thing. Like, you're not going to tell someone to go coitus themselves. Right, but why hasn't, good. why hasn't coitus evolved in the way that fuck has? Because what you say about fuck is true, but it's also true of other cuss words um, and in other languages. Cuss, so cuss words eventually end up taking different... True. Different, you know, like shit. You know, bullshit is something that we say to... So today, bullshit is not just the feces that come out of a bowline male, um, <laughs> right? It's, no. It's what we say to say something is not true or something is right. a, a lot of hogwash. So those words can mean several different things. So you don't make a wrong assumption. But why didn't that happen with coitus? Can you guess? Mm, I have no idea, to be honest. I couldn't have either until I read this article. And I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I thought it made a ton of sense. I don't know if it's true or not. I well, don't spill the beans. What is it? I'm getting there. <laughs> so in 1066, so back when, um, so you know about William the Conqueror? Have you heard of him? Yeah, yeah. So William the Conqueror is a Norman duke, like the Duke of Normandy. Normandy is a settlement in France, to, still known today as Normandy. And it's called Normandy. It comes from the word Norman, Norsemen. Mm -hmm. Because a bunch of Vikings that came to serve one of the King Louis of France right. were rewarded with that territory in um, compensation for them helping them helping the King of France. Right. Or you know, most people war. also know Normandy from like storming the beaches of Normandy from like the World War. And so these guys invade England, and then England becomes. It used to be England used to be Anglo-Saxon. The word Angle, the Angles and the Saxons are Germanic tribes. They yep. come from what is now Denmark. I believe, and the England is actually named after the Angles. It's Angle Land. If you say that fast, it's Angle Land, and if you keep going, got it. So English is the Angle language, and the Saxons. Everybody's heard of them. The Saxons are the guys that are pretty much have England taken and populated. They've taken it from the Celts way back. The first Britons, they're called the Celts or the Celts. The, the, it's pronounced the same. It's the same word. That you can pronounce either way. Well, I know, but that's it's always bothered me when there's like the team that's. You know, they're the Celtics, or depending on where you're at in the country, they're the Celtics. So speaking about piss and dick, that's what, that's when I was born, it was Celts, and now it's cooler to say Celts. So both of them are, are <laughs> both of them are cool. Both are correct. Cool with a K. Um, cool but, with a K. Yes. But I'm um, sorry. It's like thick with two C's. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the Celts. Um, so the Saxons take over England from the Celts. The Normans take it from the Saxons. The Normans speak French. The Saxons speak Angle or Germanic languages, Proto English. Yeah, Proto as in before. Yes, what we know as English today. All of the words that come from Germanic now are vulgar, and let's remember the word vulgar comes from vulgus, which I I think just means the populace, the the, the great and washed, like the the people. Wait, so that's why it's that's why fuck has been. So the theory is the theory is that the families that want their children to grow up. And, and have a future, just like in Spain now, all families try to teach their kids English, because that's the language of the future, because we are a sure. submitted, colonized <laughs> country. We are of the Empire of the United States, and, and this is true of all of Europe, in fact. Um, in the same way, kids are shamed from saying um, certain words in, in um, the, their old... Um, really? That was what the article said. So, like, fick, which is the German word for fuck, is the ancestor of the word fuck and coitum yeah, yeah, yeah. is Latin 
And Latin is what French is built upon. French is a Romance language. Right. Romance languages, if you look it up, are just um, languages evolved from Latin. So the whole thing, so if you think about it, why can we say fuck? So if you're saying coitus, you're just saying fuck in Latin. How come we can say coitus? And no one, the ladies don't go, ah, and you don't get burned in a stake or, you know. Or censored on TV or whatever. Or bleeped yeah. out of your yeah. brain. Or, but then you say fuck, and everybody's like, oh, my God. No, you have to say F dash. You know, what the fuck is that? <laughs> right? I would say that's effing ridiculous. It totally is. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is. So, so I just wanted to make that point because I think it, it ties nicely to what you're saying about the relativity of what is bad right. sounding and why. Well, and, you know, building off of that, what is bad sounding, you can even force certain languages or certain, like, phrases even to sound like they're bad just by the use of censorship. Oh, and yeah. that is something I find amazing. I've seen a lot of compilations online of people taking like children's shows, which are completely, completely innocent and obviously devoid of all this stuff. And then they just put in some very well-timed beeps. So they bleep it. And then you watch it back. And then suddenly this kid looks like he's got a sailor's mouth. Now, I remember Barney the dinosaur just going, I want to be in with you. With two bunch of kids. <laughs> I thought that was brutal. <laughs> I but but I it's all that. because of a well-timed sensor. So, like, let's say we were going to say a sentence. Yeah. Just anything. And so we'll do it once without and once with okay. sensors. So an example of that would be, I'm feeling regretful for shouting in the streets. I'm <laughs> regretful for <laughs> in the streets. See how that works? So <laughs> It's the same thing. It's only, but but it's going to give it a completely different angle. So the whole thing is, it's all in your head, and it's in what you're being taught is a bad thing. So you can see just by like adding in those censorship bleeps, like it's the same thing that we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, where you're talking about like effing or whatever. Even just a bleep now with like the start of the word, a bleep, you're like, oh, I I just got placed in my head, like, oh, I'm fucking regretful for shitting in the street like that's exactly what is now you know I meant I, I didn't think you said that <laughs> it is about putting it no you're right but it, that's, that's it's what about it is. like it plants in, it in your head right right and so let's go back to the point of respects right so like okay I, as i respect something somebody that has decided that those are rude words and that they are disrespectful to say around them i i respect your right to think that Right. Um, I will try my best normally to not swear in front to of To be respectful like that. of that fact. To, to be respectful. Yeah, but yeah, at yeah. the same time, I don't feel I should be shamed. Or have to censor myself. Or, or have to censor myself because you think that when, when I don't agree. Yeah. So, um, again, I am all about offering respect, but then um, that has limits just like my swearing all the time should have a certain reasonable limit. You know, like, I, I, I don't feel like I should do it all the time. I feel I should be able to do it all the time. <laughs> but if somebody, I, I do get that some people have grown around it so much that they've been conditioned to think that that's an awful word and it makes them very uncomfortable. So I understand that. What I don't understand, for example, is people that write reviews on Netflix about how my wife and I had to sit through this profanity. I mean, doesn't it say I don't, see, on the that's, movie that there's That's profanity? something I don't get either. Well, why do you watch it if it says there's parental It's advisory? literally in the front, in right. the very beginning, where it's like giving you, hey, this television show or whatever has adult language, nudity, graphic violence, whatever. Like, it lists it right there. And then you go on and you say, I can't believe there is so much of this, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. I was like, well, it, first of all, it has a rating system. It's rated R for a reason. Two, it lists adult language as being one of the key things that is going to be happening throughout the series or the episode or whatever so I, I i just don't understand i don't understand the mentality of thinking you can watch that seeing all of these warnings and then going i didn't appreciate that you want to make a bet that there's some stupid ass wife that's watching this that is going to complain that we're swearing uh probably not and if, it's, big, if it's anyone that knows us they're definitely not but isn't there like a big fat parental advisory on everything we post well, I do have to mark our episodes as explicit because we use foul language. Fuck yeah. So then if you Which is kind of the whole reason we're doing this episode, to be honest. If you disapprove of that and you're just watching this to get mad 
at this. Why are you doing this to yourself? If you're just watching it because you're interested. Hey, at least they're watching it. That's all I can say. Well, no, I appreciate it too. No, but I was, I was going to say, <laughs> there might be some people that are watching because they're really interested in hearing a different point of view. And to those people, I say, bravo for you, you know? And for those of you listening that did not know that you could actually watch this podcast as well, you can go to YouTube and search Burton Vons. Right. And in fact, on the YouTube channel, I'm going to put a GIF, an animated GIF of myself um, because in a previous gig that I was working on, somebody put a swear jar. Oh, I love the swear. Yes, the story is great. It was really funny. And this is a person I really like, by the way. And I'm not going to mention her name, but if you, she's watching, she knows who she is. Uh, and she's probably suffering through this episode. <laughs> and this is a very nice lady that just culturally could not abide by swearing. And she was very nice about expressing that. And uh, we respected her wishes. Um, I have to say, I wasn't the first one. I walked in that company the first day I was in a meeting with the business stakeholders and the lady sitting next to me threw like four, she, she dropped four F-bombs like right in the first half hour. Oh, you knew you were going to fit in right there. And I was like, I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to fit in fucking so, great here. So, right. So we were all swearing away <laughs> all fucking day. You know, and this lady who comes from a different culture and she, at one point she, she asked very nicely. She, first she apologized and then I was the first one to say, please don't apologize for saying that. You are in your right to say if this makes you uncomfortable. And we don't want to make you uncomfortable at all. You know? So um, so she did say that. But then a couple of weeks later, as a joke, she put the swear jar in there. And I, had to, <laughs> I had to send an email about saying, like, while I was, you know, understanding of other people's, that didn't mean that I thought I was wrong. Yep. And uh, so, you know, I just wanted people to, th- to know that I would take this in good jest, but I wanted to remind them that I should not be penalized for thinking the way I thought. Uh, and then I Which proceeded, is a good point to make. Right. And then I proceeded to take an animated gift on myself that I'll be putting on screen right now where I'm actually putting dollar after dollar in the swear jar. And there's just a, a repeating loop. Yep. <laughs> it's and so good. I mean, there's a caption that either says, so is this a fucking swear jar? <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember the first day you made that and sent it to me. I was I was laughing for a solid yeah, 10 minutes just I, watching that. That one was fun. That one was really fun. <laughs> and I think I started, like, when, when I started in Facebook, I'm way back when. I'm no longer there, but um, it was like a thing of the marketing department. So I was I was in advertising sort of uh and the marketing department was all about social media and then the next such a thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so everybody at work was there, like, you know, the VPs, everyone. Right, because you had to know about it, you had to do research, had to, like, right. see how things were evolving. and Right, and they were friending us, and so, like, you know, you would... Then, Ooh, that's a dangerous part. I know, but and, and back then, like, everybody was trying to play it cool, so it wasn't that dangerous. I mean, yeah, they, I, they I suppose. Everyone was kind of not really posting much or being more cautious about it. It wasn't right. as... Now, freely posting things as it is now, which is why you probably should never really friend your boss unless you're really close. And to if your boss. friend, if your friend <laughs> bosses you, no, if your boss friends you, um, you should have a different um, profile. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. Either so, that or just completely monitor everything that you're posting. Well, yeah, it's yeah. I, I just don't do it anymore. Um, if if I if I share, I know on purpose that I'm sharing and it's public and it's going to go. Uh, but anyway, um, and I, I would bump into, I bumped a couple of times into some people in senior leadership. Right. And they would be like, oh my God, you're so funny. Like you cracked me up on Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. So one day I just, one day, like, I think this was like 2008 something. I just put a, a, a status update that was like, um, can I uh, swear on this fucking thing? <laughs> Cause I was sick of like, you know, yeah. like, filtering myself. I'm like, I want to try to work. You know, if they don't like it, then. Now it's a little different because, you know, now if they don't like it, they can actually, legally, they can't discriminate upon you for the content that you put online. But they will, you know. Um, some people well, will. And they a- give people, they give other people the controls to do that for themselves, too. So, like, I know a lot of friends who may not agree with everything everyone else posts, so, but they're still friends with those people. So, they're like, oh, well, I'll keep them as a friend, but I'll just hide their posts so I don't have to read their posts. That's fair. I wonder how many people had you muted when you were still on Facebook. No, there's a ton of people that, that, that and on Twitter. So, on Twitter, I had a, a lot more – I had like 2,000 followers on Twitter. I think really? I, I still do. Back in the day, um, a few people told me, like, oh, no, I got you muted. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the funny thing is that most of those people, when I told them that I had to mute them too, they, they got mad. They got all salty. Yeah. So, so they, they just said it to you as a me, joke. Right, like, but it's not funny when I do it to them. Like, oh, it's okay. I don't see your shit either. You know, 
because it's bland and it's you know it's what everybody else says and it's picking up everyone's because I used to do like this trolling thing <laughs> I muted you because you were boring like everyone else yeah probably, like, probably. <laughs> no, that's, that's what you told them <laughs> well yeah because people no people get salty about shit I say so they, they well people just get salty like predominantly and I think it's different with you and me and a couple other uh, friends that we know because we grew up in creative in, well, creative world in the creative world you and, have to have a real thick skin because you get criticized all the time you get told that people don't like your shit you need to fix your shit your shit's not good enough like there, there's a lot of things that you get to hear and you just have to kind of like build a tolerance towards and get strong about but a lot of people don't have to go through that. They don't go through those same sort of trials and tribulations that, like, say, creatives do. Mm-hmm. So when they hear that, oh, well, I, you know, muted you because I didn't like the stuff you were posting. It just wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Suddenly they're hurt because they're like, well, there's no value in what I'm posting. Is that what you're telling me? No, no, no. I still love you. I just thought that whatever you were posting was boring. Yeah, I should have qualified that a little bit more because, you know, um, I just have – a certain humor online that some people don't absolutely don't like yeah. and, and that's totally cool i don't care i think you are entitled not to like it and you're entitled not to want to listen to it yeah you know and the only thing i'm saying is that some people that would tell me that would announce this really happy and then get salty yep. were the very very people that didn't like the fact that i was calling people out on being boring and predictable and then they were that themselves so, right exactly you know so you, you you say what everybody else is saying today socially and i'm sick of that so i'm gonna you know, I don't know, I've heard it all a million times. I don't need to hear it a thousandth time. It's like, I, I don't know, like Leonard Nimoy dies one time, you know, like, cool, he died the one time. Yeah, yeah, And And all of a sudden, everybody's a Star Trek, is a Trekkie. Uh, yesterday, they, no one was talking about Star Trek, but now everyone's, oh, I have Leonard Nimoy, all these childhood memories. So when I <laughs> open my feed and I see, like, all these Leonard Nimoy posts, inevitably, at some point, I'm going to put a status update that says, fuck Leonard Nimoy. Well, that's just because you know, that's because you're being bristly intentionally. And, that's right. And so, if you don't get it, like I, I mean, I don't know the man. I really don't want him to get fucked. Um, I'm sorry that he died. Um, it's not like we did. Oh, have I mean, he was a great guy. Let's not get it wrong. Well, yeah, and and, and uh, spoiler alert: he knew he was going to die. Okay, that's kind of well. Same with um. I, I, so you're. It's funny you should bring that up with Star Trek because I noticed the exact same thing happened when Peter Mayhew died. Okay, and he was the guy that played Chewbacca in Star Tro- in oh, Star right, Wars. Yep. And so when Peter Mayhew died, suddenly everyone is a Star Wars fan. Even people I know that I've talked to in the past, you know who you are, and you said you never even watched Star Wars. You don't even know who Peter Mayhew is. Well, they did because everyone was posting about it. Right, right. But the day prior, you did. <laughs> Before that, they didn't. Mm-hmm. So you know who you are. So, I think it's just as um, legitimate that somebody mutes me. Yep, absolutely. For, for being an asshole on purpose, you know. Even though I'm trying to be, make it funny, but you cannot find it funny. I get it, and that's fine. Uh, but then understand that I'm going to mute you for being a boring ass. You know. Well, here's the, the point I think you're trying else. to make. The point I think you're trying to make is that people have the freedom to do these things now, where you can mute or whatever. So if it's not something you enjoy. Just don't watch it. Don't listen. You have the freedom to choose to not do that. Instead of trying to make comments on it and saying, oh, I didn't like it because of this. You should change. You should do something different. It's so you should change. You can still say I didn't like it. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's more about the censorship. You know, why would you – if you don't want to watch something, you are in your right not to do it. Right. right. Why would you stop somebody else from watching it just because you don't like it? That's what's wrong, in my opinion, about censorship. What's in, that's what's immoral. Actually, I agree. It's I not, agree. It's amoral. It's not – it's wrong. You know, you sh- you are nobody to say what anybody else needs to be exposed to other than, you know, if you want to protect somebody from some a real threat, like, for example, an epidemic or a disease, then you can protect somebody from being exposed to those viruses. But this isn't a virus. I agree. This is knowledge and it's culture, whether you like it or not. Well, and the thing is, is like, especially with people trying to protect their kids. So, like, if you grew up in a culture where your culture doesn't allow that to begin with, Fine. All right. Mm-hmm. That's that's culturally your way. I'm not going to try and convince you otherwise. That's just who you are, and I respect that. But when you're trying to do it to your kids, and if your kids don't know any different, so like here in America, for example, because I'm not sure how it is with other countries. I'm not going to speak for other countries, but here in the U.S., kids are going to hear those words. They're going to hear those things. They're going to see things. 
the, honestly, my personal opinion is that it's better to just let them discover it. And when they have questions, answer the questions about it. Or if you can tell that they're using it improperly, that's where the education moment happens, where it's like, oh, I noticed that you've been using this word that daddy's been using all the time because he doesn't know when to monitor himself around you. Here is the conversation we need to have about that word. And it's just like what you were saying earlier about like being being taught to be respectful of things, right? Uh-huh. Where it's like, here is the knowledge. I'm equipping you with the knowledge. You should know about it, but be mindful. Uh-huh. And you're giving me a lot of food for thought here. Uh, the whole subject of respect. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say this one thing, and I don't want to get into detail, but I've been I've grown up in four national in schools of four different nationalities: Spain, German, British, and American. Yeah. And you can say American, I mean USA, so North American. Remember? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> remember uh, our old Columbus episode. In fact, yes. In fact, uh, the uh, the North American school and the German are one of the same. They're an international school. Okay. And it was in Germany, and it was mostly staffed by citizens of the U.S. Sure. And as well as some British. So and, was it like and German? It was. Do you say it was also um, um, like USA folk because of the teachers there, or because there was like an exchange? Because that of the happened? teachers there. It was, okay. it was it was called an international school. Got it. Okay. It was an international school. It was um, the teachers were of three different nationalities: German, English, and um, U.S. And it was in Germany. The country was Germany. So the pupils were mainly German and North American with some British. Then I went to British school, and I've been in Spanish school too. In all of those experiences, I have seen traumatic shaming of kids for different things. They're yep. culturally, all of which my opinion is, to, and we can make an episode of that because that's a long subject, but the, the most important thing that I want to get to here is adults, now I know, having grown up and knowing more about the world, adults being childish and shaming kids and traumatizing them and creating a ton of confusion in a person that then is going to grow up to become an adult and influence other children. So there's some things that are completely absurd, and and I think those are not that are morally reprehensible, and they're certainly not seeing somebody in their underwear saying a cuss word. It's more yep. making a per, a child feel inadequate or even absolutely build a con inferiority complex in a child because of some stupid social convention that you cross the street to the other side of the street and there's not a convention there or it's a the opposite convention. So I wanted to make that. Um, I think that's the serious point of this. Kind of, I think so too. Like the underlying, like the underlying message behind all of this. Obviously, profanity was the avenue we chose to go down for this one in particular, just because we also thought because it would it's be a fascinating, little, fucking it's fascinating, subject. and it's a little funny, and all of those things. But the whole underlying message to all of that is, you know, ju- just be mindful when you're trying to do all this stuff and keep into consideration the perspective of the other people involved and be a little bit more humble about what you know you don't know the f- the whole truth as we don't either <laughs> so don't, I, don't i really fucking don't know the whole truth <laughs> don't decide what other people need to see or learn or hear or say right uh that's always always a dangerous downslope always um and and it's uncivilized to be quite honest. So, and it traumatizes kids that um, our future is in their hands. So, you know, I mean, we're, we're building. In summary, don't be a cunt to kids. That's right. Speaking of cunts. <laughs> Speaking of cunts. So there's one word. That oh, you actually have a thing for, okay. Let's, no, I, I, you got, you got to think for cunts. Yeah. <laughs> um, we that, were talking. That's not what I meant, but okay. we were talking the other day about how different the word cunt is here. Oh my gosh. Yes. As opposed to England. Right. So here, so you, you want to expand on that? Yeah. 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 So I was um, talking about this the other day specifically because I was watching uh, a British show. I forget what show it was, but, uh, and they were talking about how they don't, they don't understand when they come to the U S like why cunt is such a big deal because here, that is one of like the most visceral, horrible things you can ever say is cunt. Nobody can say cunt here. Because the moment you do, everyone reacts in such a violently negative way. But almost everywhere else in the world, 
cunt is like this like fun social like anything and everything can be a cunt you can even like use cunt in like a friendly manner so it's like ah yeah cunt and people are talking about it that way yeah and, and it's just it does not mean nearly the same stuff and i've always found that interesting that one word can it, i mean it's still it's profanity in both in both yep. areas but in this one it's like us saying shit like nobody gives a shit about that right, right. versus here you say cunt and everyone loses it it just goes to show that context really is everything. So in in the States, typically cunt is a, an insult to a woman. And as such, it is a very, very rude, it's extremely rude, extremely offensive and insulting remark. In Great Britain, it's a way to say you dumbass. And it's an asexual insult. It usually falls upon males. Hey, what a little cunt. He's perfect. But it can follow up on male and female. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have a gender. No. It's just a way to say you're a fucking idiot. You know? Yeah, exactly. Or, or you're an asshole. Uh, you know. And I think it's the fact that it's it's the choice of a specific genitalia that makes us more controversial. My best friend's nickname is Cunty. I'm sorry. Her name is Cunty. Well, and it's also interesting because, because asshole asshole is like neutral. You know what I mean? Right. So you can be a female or a male asshole. You're still an asshole. And so that one doesn't have that contention, whereas right. cunt is attacking a certain gender. So Well, so here's one that actually flips the other way, is that while cunt is seen here as a really bad and vulgar thing, mm-hmm. bitch. I was going to say. Bitch over there. That one is the one that people get really yeah, upset about. Yeah. Because that one, that one over there, that's the more like attacking female specifically sort of thing. Whereas here, everyone just goes, yo, bitch, what up? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yes, it used to be something more, but it became used so frequently that now everyone's like, yo, bitch, what it's, up? It's like how the context is, has evolved and how certain groups have taken it and made it something else. Exactly. Because, like, cunt, for example, it's funny, it's cunt in Spanish. In Spanish from Spain, cunt is not a big deal at all. And in, Sp- in Spanish in other Spanish countries, or Spanish-speaking countries, I should say, is a huge deal. So cunt, <laughs> the word cunt, which has a great spelling, coño, C-O-N-O, okay? And enye is not, by the way, just make it this It's clear. the in with the tilde. Yeah. It's, first of all, that's not a tilde in Spanish. A tilde is a, a different accent. And second of all, saying the enye is an N with a squiggly is like saying that the R is a P with a kickstand. It's okay? also true, though. It's... Um, it's a completely different letter. But anyway, <laughs> let's leave it at that. C-O-N-O, coño, means cunt. And in Spain, it literally means, hey. So my grandfather, speaking, you were speaking earlier about how... Well, it literally means just, hey? It, it actually means cunt, but it's turned into, by context, into... Oh, okay. Hey. So like, hey, what are you talking about? Or like, but hey, listen, you know, that's where you, you would drop it there. And like... Just to give you a great example, my grandfather, who passed away, I mean, both my grandfathers have, uh, but you were talking earlier about how he, with your grandparents you can swear. My grandfather, um, throughout his life, whenever he saw me, his, his greeting was he would open his, up his arms for an embrace mm-hmm. and he would go, coño, like every time. <laughs> That's not a swear word in Spain anymore. You know, it's a really sweet story until I think about what you just said with other countries. And I can only imagine what they would be thinking seeing this. Well, the thing is they know, just like we know how British people, because of films, maybe before you didn't know. Or as British people would say, films. Films. So, yeah. (laughs) But but you know how like we know that cunt is not a swear word there. So if somebody calls you a cunt here from there, you kind of don't get – it's the same exact thing. You just kind of play it off a little. I even heard that once um, during the Civil War in Spain, I think it was, uh, a bunch of exiles that went to South America, a country in South America, and they were greeted. So they were the opposition to Franco, obviously, who had um, rebelled against the existing government. They were offered asylum – asylum, yes, in um, some South American countries. And they were greeted with these big – Signs that said, we welcome the cunts. Because no. th- they knew us as that because they know that's our expression that we – but it, it, it even gets bigger. <laughs> like, but, but you can say – if you say it in a certain content, it goes right back to, to meeting vagina. If you say it in a certain different content, you know. Right. So – but if you say, hey, you know, we're talking about cunt. You know, then it's, hey, you know, like, cunt, what's going on? So the other one that we say is coñazo. C O N A Z O, which is a superlative. The atho part means it, it makes it bigger. So, a, you, so you're a bigger cunt if you say that. Yeah, it's a huge cunt. It, what, it's a, I don't know if I'm trying to think if if you have superlatives in English, or you have diminutives. 
Right? Yes. So you could be Bert or you could be Bertie. Yes. A diminutive makes it smaller. A superlative makes it bigger. Yeah. So I don't know if you're, if you're like Berton. I don't know. It doesn't exist in English. In Spanish, it does. So a, well, I mean, there is Bert and Mus. Right. But that's a, that's a, while that is a suffix, <laughs> it is not, a, it doesn't make it bigger or, or smaller. So a coñazo is a big, huge cont. And it means, literally in Spanish slang, it means a pain in the ass. Oh, like, if okay, you keep okay. droning over something, you're a coñazo. Like, don't be a coñazo about this, dude. Right, right, right. Why are you giving me the coñazo with this? It's like, <laughs> seriously. And, and and when you say that to the point where people that don't think they swear, like, for example, my mother, my mother's a very proper lady, and she's always actually told us how for swearing. So there's there's that in Spain, too. I'm not saying okay. that there's, it doesn't exist. It's just not as much as the norm here. And uh, and she will say it every once in a while, and me and my siblings will be like, "You said it." You said it. She's, "No, I didn't. No, I didn't." You know, because it's, <laughs> it is that ubiquitous, you know. And so, it, isn't that something? That, I think that's great. That things are that relevant. Just the fact that it, it's like a little subtle difference suddenly changes the entire meaning of that word. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, "Hey, stop being an asshole." <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> Well, didn't you say when you came back from Sweden that in Sweden? Oh, so about? there was a story from Sweden. Yeah. So I learned um, – I, I did learn something in Swedish that I was really excited to share with my friends because I was like, I, I got them. I learned a curse word. Uh, and they didn't teach it to me, so I felt really proud of it. And I walked up and I say this thing to them. And then you just start rolling on the floor laughing hysterically because I clearly have no idea what I have just uttered. So what I said was, Yabla fita. And they just started dying laughing. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. First of all, what did I actually say? And they were like, <laughs> and they said, you just said someone is being a real cunt. And I was like, oh, God. I, okay, I knew it meant kind of that. I didn't realize how much it meant of that. Like, mm-hmm. I thought I was just like, telling someone they were an awful person Mm -hmm. in like a mean way. And they're like, no, 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 no. See, like there's a nice way to say it. And then there's the really bad way to say it. And you just picked the really bad way to say it. What was the nice way to say it? I don't remember what the nice way to say it was. I I just remember that the way that I've learned it, um, it's actually like the super bad, like don't say that to anybody ever. And especially not a female in Sweden, you will get hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. Because also here, speaking of which, there's an expression in Spanish and Spanish slang, both of which include profanity. Yeah, but one of them is a good thing, and the other one is fighting words. And it just it's the change of one monosyllabic word, so one syllable. Yeah, yeah. In the saying, that to a non-Spanish speaker sounds really similar, so it's really easy to mess that one up. Okay. So the good one. So if if anybody knows some Spanish or knows Spanish at all, you'll be familiar with the term puta or puto. Have you ever heard oh yeah, I'll, okay. dude. I grew up in Southern California. I heard that all the time. So puta is a uh, word saying prostitute. Um, puta would be female. Puto would be male. Yep. Um, that's really the the gist of it. There's more. Um, there's more angles to it, but that's all you need to know for this. Um, in Spanish slang, in Madrid slang, I should say. No, actually, in, in Spain in, in general, in the country of Spain, um, not South America, um, there's an expression that is de puta madre. If literally translated, that would be of whore mother. Now, Ooh. I explain what that means. That is a way of saying, um, because as you know, expressions vary in different languages. If you say that in Spanish, what you're saying is in whore mother style. So the word style is not said, but that's it's implied. Okay. So how are you feeling? It's like saying fucking A. What does fuck, how, how can you translate fucking A outside? Try translating that outside of English. You can't. You know, a, fucking A, you can't. And, and people are like, an A that's fucking, what is that? Yeah. But you have to explain it. This is the same. So in whore mother style, means like, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm fucking A. I'm in whore mother style. You know, <laughs> did, you, did you like the movie? I thought it was a, in whore mother. You know, that's the expression. <laughs> that's such a weird thing to hear translated. But. Really funny, though. Really funny. And this is an aside, is in, in Mexico. Uh, good is padre, which is father. But in Spanish, it's mother. So I wonder if it has something to do with the old matriarchal society in the oh. Gallic Islands that preceded the Roman Empire. Who knows? Another episode. Very probable. That. Very probable. So, the puta madre, the puta madre is in horror mother style. How are you feeling with the puta madre? Did you like that movie? It was the puta madre. How was that plate that you just ate? The puta madre. You know, how are we feeling? So, you just use it a lot. We, lose, we use it all the time, and it means fucking awesome. Okay, you change the word de, which is de. Yeah. So for two, 
which is you. So it's or, instead of de puta madre, it's tu puta madre. Tu puta madre. See how similar it sounds? You have, yeah. to, you have to make it sound. So if I say it in Spanish, it'll sound very dissimilar. Watch. De puta madre. Yeah. As opposed to tu puta madre. Yeah. But in this person, it's like, tu puta madre, tu puta madre. It sounds exactly the same. <laughs> tu puta madre means your whore mother. Ooh, it's, it's okay. That's the fighting words, right? right. And it's a way to say, it, it, the context that's usually used is when somebody says that and it's like right back at you, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Kind of, it's like, so you know, why did you do this? Like, why doesn't your whore mother do it? You know, it's kind of like that. It's, so Got it. So if you say something, somebody says, tu puta, you go, my, my, my whore mother, what? So, so that starts a, a problem. Yes. Let that be a lesson to anyone listening. Uh, if you plan to go to Spain and rattle off a couple of little things you hear on this show because, you know, you want to show off that you've learned some Spanish, be very cognizant of which version of that you're using. <laughs> and that's a great point. To, that circles back very nicely to what we started saying. It's like, know how to exactly it, understand the context. Context is everything. It's not the actual word it, in itself. It's what it carries with it. And that is the context and your know-how exactly. and your style and your class. And you don't lose any class by saying fucking class if you know how to say it with fucking class. That was very well put. Did fucking put, A, that was good. I put the ass in class. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure I knew that girl in high school. But the shit that you um, hear about us. <laughs> I motherfuckers. That's a wrap. That is fucking it for today. I hope it was educational. Maybe you picked something up. Hopefully you weren't offended. If you were, well, maybe this wasn't the right podcast for you. But, I mean, we've got a lot of other ones, so don't worry about it. We're going to find something you like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Until the next time. Stay out of prison, motherfuckers. And walk in the shade, bitch.